George Cole, the Trenton Tea Warmer, born February 4th, 1874, and born in town, New Jersey. He died February 7th, 1923, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, just 44 years of age. From the time of his rest, he was a tough pill to swallow. Standing five foot seven inches, weighing 145 pounds, and managed by Joe Butler. He would total up a career record of 75 fights, 48 wins, 13 losses, and 9 draws. Many no decision contests. But he would face Bobby Dobbs, who was the colored lightweight champion. Now, Bobby Dobbs would take on Joe Gans two separate occasions. They were both in defense of his colored lightweight championship belt. He would have one no contest with Joe Gann. So, well, I shouldn't say no contest. It was a no decision contest. And he would defeat Joe Gans once. He would take on young Peter Jackson. Now, young Peter Jackson was known as Sim Tompkins, the Baltimore Demon. Oh, what a fighter he was. George Cole would be in the ring with Philadelphia's Jack O'Brien, who was a light heavyweight champion. And he would lose his title to Jack Dillon, the giant killer, giant slayer. Philadelphia Jack O'Brien would lose to Sam Langford, 1911, in six rounds. Jack O'Brien would take on Tommy Burns and Jack Johnson, many others. But Jack O'Brien would be in the ring with George Cole. Cole would also take on Jack Twin Sullivan. Now, Jack Twin Sullivan be the fighter that Stanley Ketchu would defeat for the middleweight championship crown. Sam Langford had offered to fight Jack O'Sullivan, or Jack Twin Sullivan, and with his brother. There were two Sullivan brothers, and they both refused Sam Langford. But George Cole would take on Claude Brooks, who was known as Black Bill, Larry Temple, Charles Jack Blackburn, and Joe Jeanette, the Iron Man from West Hoboken, New Jersey. Would take on Philadelphia's Dave Holly, Walter Johnson. Andy Watson and Larry Temple. We take on Cleveland Hawkins and George Gunther, Black Dixie. We had 14 fights in 1905, nine fights in 1906, 13 fights in 1907, 10 fights in 1908, and six fights in 1909, and many, many more. So I wanted to pay homage the George H. Cole on this series of 10 greatest black welterweights of all times. George Cole was a phenomenal welterweight and he unfortunately doesn't get the recognition that he so rightly deserves. What a fighter George Cole was. And I just wanted to mention him in this series. Now the man you're looking at here is Arthur Frazier. But I spoke to you about George Cole. And the fighter that he faced was Larry Temple. Let's talk about Larry Temple, and I want to pay homage to him as well. The Quaker City Terror. Born 1882. 
Died November 17, 1942, in Hempstead, Long Island. It's in New York. We had 145 to 165 pounds, and he was managed by Joe Messias. And Larry Temple took on Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, Sam Langford, Jack Blackburn, George Cole, and Barbados Demon, Joe Walcott. As well as George Gunther, Dixie Kidd, Claude Brooks, young Peter Jackson. Did you know that Jack Johnson had signed a contract to KO Larry Temple? And he was unable to do so in four rounds. Larry Temple went the distance. He was the originator of the half swing bolo punch, which, as I think back, you can even give that credit to Bob Armstrong. You see, Bob Armstrong taught the solar plexus punch to Bob Fitzsimmons. Larry Temple also faced Black Bill, Jamaican Kid, Tony Ross, Harry Lewis, and Neil Moore Bowser. He was in a ring with Jim Jeff Fords. When he took on Dixie Kid, Aaron Brown, November 5th, 1904, fought him in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's a six round decision contest. Fought him again January 2nd, 1905, Baltimore, Maryland. This one was a 15 round draw. He was in the ring with Sam Langford, March 2nd, 1906, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he lost to him in 15 rounds. He actually lost to him in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Fought him again March 11th, 1908, in Boston, Massachusetts. And he would lose to him in eight rounds. That Sam Langford was a tough cookie, I'll tell you. Temple was in a ring with Joe Walcott, the Barbados Demon, November 17th, 1908, Boston, Massachusetts. And he would stop Joe Walcott in 10 rounds. Oh. I would love to put him on his list, but there's three slots left. And I would like to preserve those for three very special fighters. Shout out to Larry Temple. What a phenomenal fighter he was. Now another young welterweight that I like to pay homage to on this series of 10 greatest black welterweights of all times is Tommy Coleman. Young Tommy Coleman. Born June 5th, 1888 in Delaware. He would stand five foot nine and a half inches, weighed 141 to 152 pounds. And he was managed by Nathaniel Kirk. Had well over 100 fights. He had great victories and outcomes over Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost, Dixie Kid. George Kid Ash, William Langford, and Hawk Bones, Eddie Palmer, and Joe Grimm, Jack Blackburn, Black Griffo, Jack Clark. They have no decision contest of a Kid Griffo and Ruff Turner, Johnny Kid Albert, Joe Burrell. K.O. Cuban, and Jimmy Clabby, Jeff Clark, and Joe Warner. Buffalo Sunflower, and Kit Turner. Joe Buck Kelly, and George Jackson. He would lose to the Barbados Demon, Joe Walcott. Now, Jeff Clark, 
what a fighter he was. Now, I must bring Jeff Clark into this conversation. Winlock Jefferson Clark, Joplin Ghost, born June 28, 1886, in Morrisville, New Jersey. He was staying 5 foot 11 inches, weighed 146, as high as 180 pounds. He was managed by Jim Bronson, who take on Jamaica Kid and Rufus Cameron. Peter Moha and Cub White. The Dixie Kid, Jim Smith, Larry Temple, and Joe Gorman. George Kid Cotton, Balin Levinsky, Roughhouse Ware, and Joe Jeanette. Bob McAllister, Sam McVeigh. Kid Norford, and Sam Langford, Harry Wilson, Balin Jim Johnson. He would face Jack Thompson. And what a battle that was. So you see there's many welterweights. Historically to choose from. Unfortunately I can't place them on this list. They would all give you a run for their money. And unfortunately they never got a title shot. Due to the color of their skin. Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost. Amazing story. And that would shape and mold. Jeff Clark, the Joplin Ghost. I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for watching. As we continue to look and place 10 greatest black welterweights of all times. We're up to number seven. Who will it be? <laughs>